One, AI is not new. Um, the term was coined way back in 1956. Um, and uh, it's been evolving. It, we've had a few AI sort of also called winters, uh, where the amount of R&D in this space went down because in a way the hype did not live up to the, uh, the expectations. Um, what you've seen with chat GPT is didn't come out suddenly. It's been in the works, the R&D, the lot of the uh, numerical analysis, the algorithms, the data and compute have been um, in the works for many years. Because each one of us was able to or is able to engage with it, ask it to create a poetry in a chatbot format, it feels very accessible. Uh, and that's why it feels suddenly that we have this huge AI moment. Um, but I think it's important to remember the journey because you will then see points of, uh, uh, of, of users that today you use AI without even thinking about it. If you've ever used a chatbot, if you've ever used uh, any translation uh, services, um, if you have used any social media in which faces are auto-tagged, <laughs> you are using AI all the time. While there is a turning point for how ChatGPT has brought AI into the mainstream. Uh, it's not a new journey and it is accelerating. Therefore, what you can see today is part of a journey. Uh, what you see with mid-journey or any of the generative AI programs, whether you call it creativity or not, we can get into it. Um, but if I look at the same logic in any field, you may ask something, let's say a new way of approaching a problem, is that creative or not? Um, so I don't know if there's a real answer to say that, uh, you know, humans versus AI in terms of creativity. Uh, my sense is that the frontier of creativity will keep changing. And the number of people who can be creative will also keep changing. This is not necessarily about AI versus humans. Right? Um, the versus part is sometimes just presumed, but it's very important for us to keep in mind that AI, much like other technologies that have come before it, will get used by humans creatively and innovatively and to solve some of the problems that we face. So startups in India today are at the cutting edge of adopting and leveraging any technology that comes out of any part of the world, which I think is the great news. Um, at the same time, I think, so you're finding that startups are starting to use generative AI and at least including them in their pitches to investors and venture capitalists now, almost real time. Um, generating content, is something I'm seeing a lot of startups trying to do with this. I think sector-wise, anything from marketing, healthcare, education, you name it, I think space, I think AI will ultimately find application uh, across multiple sectors. It's a general purpose technology from that perspective. Um, so lots of exciting things, but it's still early days to see something inno innovative. So you know what scares me is, see, I'm generally, um, I think many people who know me know this, uh, I'm a tech optimist. I believe in the power of technology, the positives of it um, a lot. But at the same time, um, I also do believe that the way we think about the design of technology is extremely important. And I worry, what I'm scared about is that much like with other technologies that have come before AI that have shaped our world, for example, the internet, <clears throat> Unless a lot more conversations happen around what values should shape the design of the technology, the use of the technology, the application of technology, which applications get prioritized versus others, I think we end up in misusing slash selectively using slash 
not prioritizing the right problems that that technology could have solved right i mean if you think about the internet um there's a lot of talk around the attention deficit the smartphone technology has caused the business models that have emerged from the in- consumer internet world that are naturally trying to consume more and more of your time um these are all design problems right um and i worry that we have maybe not learned the lessons we should have learned from the way the internet application sometimes have not been designed keeping human values keeping human priorities in mind i worry that something similar will happen with the ai where we a bunch of people will get really excited about a application of or a certain kind of design um a certain kind of infrastructure design of ai that could be to the exclusion of others or deprioritize the problems of certain groups of people in the world etc so that's what i'm most worried about i'm not actually worried about this kind of fear that we have that the machine will take over and robots will take over i'm not a, a big believer in that what you are hearing chat gpt etc is a company called open ai microsoft has a partnership with open ai but open ai is a separate entity that a lot of companies the apis the consumption models are open so there are a lot of startups in fact it's a complete explosion of organizations that are using open ai technology having said that um as a tech company uh, we have been in the world of ai overall for more than 25 plus years and it's you know we're also uh seeing how this entire environment is is moving and how best to work with partners ai can ingest for example 12th grade cbsc entire curriculum and you can talk to it in your native language and understand what a particular concept means now now imagine that you are a parent and you are sitting in a small town and your child has an exam tomorrow and you want to be able to figure out what the child should be able to read but you are not yourself very educated but you have only your native tongue that is possible today if you combine things like translation if you combine things like uh, text to speech that is possible today right so the personalized adaptive education is not something you have to kind of think similarly if you think about your actual planetary computer i was in fact listening if you're going to look at all the satellites out there and you want to be able to get that data and want to be able to predict where potentially forest fires might happen you can't do it humanly that kind of technology in being able to question planetary scale satellite data in a way that you can actually talk in natural language that's possible today that's possible today meaning the technology now in terms of doing data analytics ai in the background being able to talk to corpus of large sections of data in natural language what you saw chat gpt that's possible today i some of one of my most favorite examples and then pass after that healthcare is a space where the exponential growth of data is so humongous that no doctor can keep up with the rate of possible diseases possible complications possible thing that worked imagine a, imagine a small child with a very very unique cardiac condition the ability for that doctor to talk to a global corpus of health data and actually find out where has this happened in the last 2 years what worked what didn't work that's possible today what i'm trying to say is that we have to think about this technology not as okay these are the problems we could solve today will human do it or not or machine will do it no we have to step back and say what kind of problems we could not even imagine solving so there is a lot of opportunity for india to build and build ai for india today if we look at what's happening with aadhaar uh, every kyc behind is using ai whether you may realize it or not So number one, I disagree that India is uh, is disadvantaged in any way. Uh, second point is the uh, issue on um, on responsible AI on values. In fact, every customer I speak with and say these are the principles, I find them first time asking themselves, 
what do they mean by fairness they are first time asking themselves what do they mean by gender equality they have not thought about it okay what does it mean by privacy what does it mean by having inclusion people with disabilities to make sure that they are included people with people with the learning disabilities it's making people realize that you have to define your values that go into technology the skill that will become more and more important and critical for humans is the ability to think critically now if you know that the person the not even the person the thing talking to you is not a human then you've got to have a critical lens to what you're hearing also right um because one reaction to that incident can be that let's now put many many guard rails on how ai will be used and the kind of applications that's one way which is often the way that in india we unfortunately tend to adopt we are afraid of technology and we tend to sometimes ban or sometimes restrict overly but i don't think that that's necessarily a good idea but i think what is more important is to find that balance between um you know innovation and regulation or um principles whereby we also make sure that the people we that are using it understand it better understand what we need to do better right uh, and i worry that you know even when i see children using technology that we are not training our next generation and ourselves to deal better with technology we have to be more critical whether it's fake news whether it's chatbots a lot of these ai driven applications will require humans to become that much more critical um in their thinking and their evaluation at microsoft satya had published an article way back in 2016 uh which was about the issues of ai and how we need to think about these systems since then we have come a very long journey and we set up a set of principles uh in 2017 which were published in a book um those principles are fairness security and privacy safety and reliability inclusion transparency and accountability these six are you may say you know what's unique about them they are not unique many organizations have these principles and if you look at the niti aayog i by the way i played some significant role in our india's uh, thinking about responsible ai so it's been something that i've been on this journey for some time um but principles don't don't work principles are just you know principles how do you put them to practice so it has been a very arduous journey to as to what will it take for an organization that works in 190 countries several 100000 people work works with thousands of partners and customers to put these responsible ai principles to practice practice is not a ma- magic wand it takes a combination of policies governance tools and techniques trainings standards it's a whole range of uh, exercises so in fact we've had we have a responsible ai standard every product that microsoft produces has to go through a responsible ai standard clearance process last year it was published out it's an open document you can look it up so i think the issue is not going to be and it's a very nuanced topic you look at any use case and you think about okay so what are the concerns what could go wrong um it's a very nuanced topic and i'm personally very very happy <laughs> that chat gpt has brought this topic to the forefront i think it wasn't getting the kind of attention it requires uh but having said that it is it is an evolving space it is a space of very active research uh, especially in terms of tools and techniques for example being able to look at a data set and say is it fair is it a biased data set uh for example to be able to look at an algorithm and say how do you interpret its results there there's a lot of work that's going on uh but i don't think it's a it's it's a magic wand we are seeing ourselves in the mirror and really understanding who we are a lot more because we are faced with this technology and i hope that makes humans realize 
we have to be kind and we have to be more optimistic